Hey everyone, so a lot of people watched the video I put out on Monday on trans people, a bit of a departure from my typical content, but I thought it would be- Oh, g'day guys, welcome back. A while back I was asked to do a video on this topic, and I stumbled across a video by Professor Dave, which we're going to be watching, and he has a video that is replying to a reply by Matt Walsh. So this should be interesting. I was a little worried about getting attacked by the woke mob based on what I said about comedians and sports, and I did get a bit of that with varying degrees of legitimacy. You look like you deserve it, you bigot. I mean, wow, to appear on my television screen and even think you can bring up the trans experience because you're some kind of professor. But it was nothing compared to the avalanche of whiny incels sent over by Matt Walsh himself. They all had lots to say about how I'm a groomer and how Matt totally destroyed me. Oh, God damn. My boy Matt Walsh destroyed you. You must be a legit bigot and groomer. You know he don't go around saying that about anyone. So this video is about you crying then, hey? Of course, this is because Matt couldn't help but attempt to respond to my video. And what's this? He canceled me? Oh no, don't cancel me, Matt. What'll I do? Wait, what? Oh, nobody cares. Uh, cancelled. Isn't that interesting about people that want to cancel? It happens from both sides. And just people labelling in general. I mean, I've been labelled extreme far right, you know, far right Nazi, because I might say a joke or two about the trans trender. And oh my God, I'm, I'm a bigot and I'm cancelled. And yet in the same breath, I might make a joke about the invisible flying spaghetti monster that doesn't exist. And all of a sudden, I'm now far left. Just amazing, isn't it? So what was this masterful analysis that so totally destroyed me, bro? Let's go through it top to bottom. Let's uh, go through this together. Everybody seems to be furious about trans people. Half of us are furious that they exist, and the other half are furious about what the other half is saying. I would like to jump in and see if I can clear up some of the ways that people are talking past each other. Talking past each other? Well, we can clear up that it's not that people hate that trans exists. We all know trans people exist. It's not that. One side does hope that the other side hates that trans people exist so they can hate them for what they believe that they are thinking. So yeah, it's, it's not that. Let's get back to it. Now, it's no secret that I'm a bit on the liberal side, but rest assured, the left is not going to get away scot-free on this one. They're missing the mark on a few key points. But as tends to be the case, it's bigots on the right who are the main problem, so let's start there. We're off to a rough start. Putting aside Dave's smug, know-it-all tone and demeanor, something that seems to be a matter of instinct for people like him, so I'm not going to hold it against him. Smug, know-it-all tone, Matt? Pot, meat, kettle. Yeah, I agree. Uh, pot, meat, kettle. Not that you can't be smug. Well, you all can be. But when you say the bigots on the right are the main issue, see, this is coming from a place where you believe what the right are thinking. Like I said earlier in your video, you say one side hates that the trans exists. That's not the case. But because you believe that and the left believes that of the right, they will then automatically call them bigots and transphobes. But you fail to understand that that is your belief of what they believe when they do know that trans people exist. That's not the issue. We'll get there throughout the course of this video. But I just wanted to bring that point up, Dave. No hate, no ill will. The real problem is that in the very first sentence, he's already wildly and intentionally mischaracterizing his opponents. In 30 seconds, he gives us a straw man and an ad hominem. A straw man and an ad hominem? Look out! The two favorite phrases of every internet narcissist incapable of actual discussion. No, Matt, what I said is neither of those things. It's called hyperbole. I know that's a big word for you. Here's the definition. An exaggerated statement or claim that is not meant to be taken literally. You're acting like I literally meant that 4 billion people are mad that trans people exist, and the other 4 billion people are mad at the first 4 billion people. Really? Not much of a scholar of language, I take it. It's just a fun way of saying a bunch of people and a bunch of people. You just called everyone on the right a bigot genius. Oh my, I loves him. Do you think he's single? Which signals that he doesn't have much to offer beyond 
this point. Because if he actually planned on making a compelling argument, he wouldn't come out of the gate breezily dismissing millions of people as bigots. Sorry, not millions, billions. Sorry, which billions are we talking about? You're now blending the two halves statement and the bigot statement for some reason. I said it's bigots on the right who are the main problem. That's true. There are bigots on the right, and they are problematic. That is not equivalent to saying everyone on the right is a bigot. As is evidenced by the large numbers of conservatives who thanked me for my video, saying that they learned a lot, despite your minions mindlessly repeating your straw man. Now, come on, Dave. You said half do this, half do that. So we're taking from that that you are splitting the population into two halves, and then later on you're calling the right bigots. Now, granted, you didn't say all of the right, but this is what we infer when we hear it delivered in this fashion. And it's not just you. People on both sides do this exact same thing. It's wordplay. You know it. I know it. We all know it. Ironically, a lot of this does come down to words and definitions of words. Let's move on with the video. We are off to a really bad start here, Matt. You've demonstrated immediately that you can understand simple sentences. Or maybe this is your tactic, misrepresent me to stir up hatred and release the mob. Yeah, that's it. He says that the people on the other side are furious that trans people exist. Yeah, you are. That's why you're denying their identity and have devoted your life to spreading bigotry. All of your content is like this. You make videos hating on feminist comedians, which really just means women, because you hate that women can be funny. You can't help but hate. Just saying you're not a bigot doesn't change the fact that you're a bigot. Sorry. Dave, 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 Dave. One could say that you are guilty of what you claim Matt is doing. Misrepresenting, stirring up shit to then release a mob. Hmm? Come on, think about it denying their identity. There's a little bit of nuance there, which we will get into, but no, many of us don't give a shit what someone wants to identify as. That's where a lot of people on the left are missing the point. And we'll get into that during this video. As for dedicated your life to spreading bigotry, um, no, this is where you, I, I don't know if you, you understand, you get it, and you're just purposely misrepresenting to stir up hatred, to unleash the mob, as you say, or if you truly don't get it. Now, I'm going to be charitable and presume that you just don't get it. But just because you don't get it doesn't mean the other party is purposely spreading bigotry. And as for Matt making videos on feminist comedian women, why are you trying to claim that he hates all women? Didn't he specify feminists? Aren't titles important, or are they only important when you decide they are? Hmm? Come on, you can do better than this, Dave. I know you can. Unless, of course, Dave, you can't help but hate. And my last point before we move on with the video, you saying that someone is a bigot doesn't mean that they are a bigot. Sorry. We're not furious that trans people exist, but rather we deny the underlying premise of gender ideology. Right. To deny the identity of trans people, you call it an ideology to pretend that there's an institution to rage against. Not what he said, but you know what he means. And you've got to understand, Dave, a lot of people for generations have interused both sex and gender to mean the one thing. And now that these two terms mean different things, when Matt and his side speak about what they speak about, they are referring to biological sex, not so much what the other side defines gender as. And I think that's where both sides are talking past each other. Overall, it's a mess and we're only 30 seconds in. Let's continue. The primary issue is people who deny transgenderism. These are the people who spew the tired Fox News talking points. Liberals say there are 89 genders and anyone can identify as a hamster, that sort of thing. It's a deliberate caricature of reality peddled by all the angry conservative dudes popping up in my feed lately who claim that nobody can define a woman. Let's all take a moment to acknowledge the problems that go along with the ambiguity of language. Sex and gender are different words 
that refer to different things. If you did not know that, now you do. Hmm. And as stated earlier, a lot of the other side consider gender and sex interchangeable. So when they are speaking about things like 79 different genders, what they are attempting to tell you is that there are only two biological sexes, not 79 different sexes. That's what they're trying to say. And you mention intersex later on, so we won't bring that up here. Now, Dave, you said the primary issue is people that deny transgenderism. Well, no one denies it. Whether or not they agree with it or believe it's a mental issue or not is irrelevant. They know it exists. They know that there are people out there that want to transition from one sex to the other. They know this. We all know this. So there is no primary issue now, is there? And as for nobody can define a woman. Now, I know you're not stupid. I know you're not dumb. You are a smart person. So when the other side says no one can define what a woman is, you know what they mean. You have to know that what they mean is an adult human female. They are referring to sex because the term gender has somehow usurped the words man and woman. And if we can stop playing these word games, maybe both sides can actually meet somewhere in the middle instead of talking past each other and getting angry at each other. So yeah, Dave, let's all take a moment to acknowledge the problems that go along with the ambiguity of language, shall we? So we, we have another common rhetorical tactic from the left. And honestly, I'm quite disappointed to hear common rhetorical tactics when I was promised an utter destruction of my worldview. And I was looking forward to it. Professor Dave says it's a tired Fox News talking point that there are a lot of genders. But that's not Fox's talking point. That's his talking point. This is indeed the official position of the gender ideologue. Nope. Nowhere in my video did I say anything about more than two genders. Sorry, Matt. For someone who whines about straw men, that's already two thus far on your end. Yeah, that's true. You didn't say that, Dave, but you know what Matt meant. Are you going to address what Matt meant? We'll see. Yes, it is indeed a Fox News talking point, which is just a way of saying the dumbest things that conservatives say, because Fox News is a primary outlet for conservative propaganda. Some activists have said things resembling that, and you run with it and accuse other people of saying it too, like you just did to me. But anyone who actually watched my video knows I didn't say that. Don't you guys hate it when liberals find the most batshit insane QAnon KKK weirdo raving about lizard people and pretend that he represents all of you? Then maybe stop doing that yourself. The issue isn't number of genders. You are denying that someone can have a gender that is different from their sex. That's all my video was about. Now, Dave, you say it's just a way to say the dumbest things that conservatives say. But if you're not understanding what they mean when they say what they say, is it really dumb? Or is it just a misunderstanding? And if you do understand what it is that they are trying to say, then are you not intentionally misrepresenting what they are saying and then painting them unfairly as dumb? And again, yeah, he did say that you said something that you didn't, which he shouldn't be saying. I agree with you there. But you know what he meant. And he was generally replying to what he believes is the left is saying X, Y, and Z, which I don't think you're going to address, are you? You're just going to say that you didn't say it. So you say the issue isn't the number of genders. And you say that Matt is denying that someone can have a gender that is different to their sex. And that's all your video was about. Well, since you know, and I'm pretty sure you already know this, but if you don't, 
allow me to state it again, since you now know that the other side has always considered sex and gender to be the same thing. So when they are speaking of a different gender, they mean a different sex. So what they are actually saying, Dave, is no one can have 76 different sexes other than the two biological sexes that there are. No one can become a different sex is what they are saying. They even say you cannot transition from one sex and become the other sex, which biologically you can't. And you agree with this. We should all be able to get along and meet somewhere in the middle with a better understanding of each other's sides. No? Now, I'm also going to add this because there are some conservatives that have accepted what the left has presented them and said, OK, we will accept that sex and gender are two separate things. But those people still believe that man and woman fall squarely into the category of sex and not gender. They may not have realized that the other side have usurped the words man and woman, and now it is a gender term. So when they speak man and woman, they are referring to biological sex and mean male and female. So hopefully this helps out yourself, which I'm sure you already know this, but this video is more to help the left that doesn't understand where the right's coming from. Not that I'm saying I'm on the right. I like to think of myself more as central and common sense orientated. That's not to say I don't fuck up too, because I'm only human. A biological human male. Something didn't, didn't sit right with me as I was putting this video together. And I don't follow Matt Walsh. I don't like the guy. But I do follow Dave, because I do like that guy. So I'm not trying to hate on Dave. But something didn't sit right with me. So I had to go and look at Matt Walsh's channel and get the original video that Matt replied to Dave about. And there's a whole section that's been cut out. And I'm not sure if there's more cut out, but based on just this one thing being cut out in the reply, I would assume other things have been trimmed out or cut out completely. So let's just uh, have a look at that part that Dave conveniently left out. Typical thicking leftists always cutting things out to paint and present the right as evil. Professor Dave would never cut anything out. He's on our side. He would never misrepresent anyone. It seems both sides do it, and it's fucking annoying. If we're furious about anything, it's that this ideology is being imposed on society, and especially on children, and it's causing great harm in the process. By saying that we're furious that trans people exist, he gets to dismiss all of us as a bunch of angry, spittle-flecked rage clowns when he is also quite well aware that when it comes to this subject, nearly all of the angry, spittle-flecked rage clowns are on the other side of the discussion. Take, for example, the people threatening to kill me and accusing me of genocide for making a documentary, a documentary where I am only visibly angry one time briefly when addressing a school board that covered up the rape of a student, so perhaps you'll excuse my emotions in that case. But the other point of this mischaracterization is to pretend that we're angry at trans people personally rather than critical of the claims made by trans activists. Dave, Dave, Dave. So Matt did tell you that he's not angry at trans people. Anyway, back to your video, Dave. Sex refers to biology, while gender is a linguistic term that refers to words, but was co-opted by a pedophile sexologist named John Money and applied to people in a vague and ambiguous way. Dave never mentions that point. He doesn't seem to know where his own ideas came from or, or else he doesn't want you to know. No, I'd never heard of this person prior to what you just said, because I'm not peddling ideology. I'm just acknowledging that trans people exist and using biology to explain it. <laughs> Why does it not surprise me that you haven't heard of this person, Dave? Shouldn't you look into these things? I mean, if you're challenging the other side or debating the other side or offering an alternative, don't you want to understand where the other side is coming from instead of just dismissing it? 
like you've said, you're not peddling an ideology, so you're putting that on him. But on his side, he's not peddling an ideology. He's pointing out that the other side is. Wouldn't you want to understand that better to then hopefully be able to come together with the other side and figure out how to address and fix these issues? Doesn't seem like it right now, unfortunately. Yes, we know you're acknowledging trans people exist. Both sides acknowledge that trans people exist. But one side is saying, hey, there's a bunch of activists that are doing X, Y, Z. And the other side is not listening to that. Instead, they're just getting offended that the other side is using old terms referring to sex. But you guys are getting offended because in your world, it represents gender. And I'm happy that you're going to go over the biology because both sides need to see that. But I also believe that if both sides are not willing to look into each other's sides to understand where they're coming from, then there's no way we're going to fix this. Instead, both sides, including you, Dave, are just throwing fuel on the fire. From here, Professor Dave provides a basically correct definition of sex with a long digression into intersexuality. A long digression. It was eight seconds. Yeah, it was only eight seconds, but Matt did cut out all of the information about sex and chromosomes. So I'm going to play that here, Dave, because it is important for both sides. So let's play that now. Sex is a chromosomal phenomenon. Nearly all of us have two sex chromosomes in all of our somatic cells. If both are X, your sex is female. If one is X and one is Y, your sex is male. There are interesting exceptions, like intersex people who exhibit a blend of the phenotypes associated with the two sexes due to chromosomal irregularities, as well as chimeric beings who exhibit different genotypes in different cells due to developing from more than one zygote. It is important to discuss and understand these populations. However, we can still safely categorize the overwhelming majority of people as exhibiting either male or female sex. Only male and female sex. Only two biological sexes, y'all. That's what we've been telling you all along. God damn it, you didn't use the word gender, so I can't cry about anything. We need to usurp the word sex too now. We can't let these bigots get away with this. And there you have it. Biological sex, only two sexes, male and female. Now the right still considers that to be a woman and a man, a boy and a girl. There used to be a saying that we remember growing up to remember the chromosomes. If it's got a Y, then it's a guy. The same thing still holds true now. You see, we all start off as female. That's why guys have got nipples. And if we don't get the Y, then you're not a guy and you come out as female. But if you do, as we just said, you're a male. Intersex is a very rare thing that happens. And I'm sorry, but... It's an error. You were meant to be a guy. How do we know this? Because if an intersex wants to grow up to be a female, they need female hormones. Not so if they want to grow up to be a guy, which is what they were intended to be. Let's continue. And then gets around to talking about gender. Let's listen to that. Gender is a different phenomenon. It is still biological, but it is a neurochemical construct. This means that ultimately it is still genetic in basis, but it absolutely is not determined merely by the sex chromosomes. It is tremendously more complicated, and researchers are still working to understand the biological basis of gender identity. Human psychology is complex. People need to deal with that. Thoughts and feelings are ultimately chemical phenomena. We all have a neurochemical profile that guides how we think and feel, and part of that is gender identity. Yes, it's uh, all in your head. That's right. That's what we've always said. We said from the beginning, even when the term gender identity was coined, we all knew it's up in the noggin. This is how you feel. This is a feeling. And it's always been that way. We used to call them tomboys or, or sissies. You know, we had our own fucking words for them back in the day. But ultimately, it is a spectrum of feminine feelings to masculine feelings. Are you a guy that feels more masculine? Are you a guy that feels more feminine? Are you a guy that sits somewhere in the middle? Are you a girl that feels more masculine? These are all things we've known for a very long time. Well, it's good that the science is catching up and finding out that it is 
up in the fucking head, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not disputing that. Now, today, they're coming up with their own terms and names for their gender identities, which is fine. You do you, boo. Didn't care. No one gave a shit. Until gender identity, suddenly, the word identity was lost, and it just became gender. And now, all these different names for their gender identities, for how they're feeling, became genders. And as you know, for a very long time, gender and sex referred to biological sex, male or female, man, woman, boy, girl. But your gender identity was your feeling, your spectrum from how feminine to how masculine you feel. And of course, there's only two extremes because there's only two biological sexes, male and female, ergo, masculine, feminine. I'm sitting here feeling like, should I even have to explain this? This is fucking so basic. But one side has co-opted certain words and, and is now hiding behind the shield of the trans umbrella. I'll, I'll explain how I see this and how most normal people see this. So let's just start with the basics, the foundation. Male and female, biological sex. And we used to use the word gender interchangeably with sex. So sex and gender meant male, female, boy, girl, and man, woman. So we're not talking about your your feelings, your preferences, how, how you want to present yourself, or who you want to date and who you feel more attracted to. It's none of that. We're not talking about any of that. We're talking about just the specific facts of biology, male and female, and the error intersex, which is still technically a male. So that's the starting point. You on the left are going to disagree with me, but just hear me out and entertain me for a moment while we go through this and just acknowledge the definitions I'm using while I'm presenting this to you. Okay, so male and female, two sexes, that's biology, that's your starting point, that's normal. So if you're attracted to the opposite sex, which most people are, and that's normal, that's heterosexual. Some people aren't. Very small percentage compared to the rest, the majority. So if you're attracted to the same sex, that was known as gay or later on lesbian as well. But we'll just include that under the same term as gay. So you've got hetero and gay. What if you're attracted to both? Well, that's bisexuality. So you're bi. So there's only three categories of what you can be attracted to biologically. Hetero, gay, bi. And then this current generation decides to come up with a hundred different other things that they are attracted to, such as pansexuality and so on and so forth, which is more of a preference within one of the three categories. But okay, we'll, we'll let that slide. No problem. We've got your gender identity and you've got your sexual preference. Okay, great. Not difficult. Makes sense. And it's biology. Somewhere along the lines, sexual preferences became intermixed with gender identities, forming new categories and new names. And it's like, uh, what are you guys doing? And a lot of it comes down to clicks and views, social media. And we found that, especially on YouTube, there were thousands of channels with young ones that were creating channels based on their gender identity and sexual preference. It was about nothing else. So... Uh, who, is that normal? I mean, does a normal straight person create a channel to say, hey, um, I, by the way, I just want to let my audience know that I'm straight and I like fucking other women, but I prefer more masculine, hairy women. And, you know, the term that I've decided to coin for that is the hairy mama. None of that's normal, but they hid behind love and inclusion and decided to usurp the trans flag, hiding behind that shield. Now, this is a problem, and these people I dub trans trenders. And I dub these people as trans trenders because they're basically getting on a trend because it's now trendy to be trans. So they're essentially wearing a genuine trans person's experience and grief and hardship of having to, to go through dysphoria and transition from one biological sex to the other to attempt to make themselves feel better. And they've usurped that journey and thrown it onto them themselves changing their gender identity to just a gender and claiming that they're transitioning from a man to a non-binary and that's not a genuine trans and if you accept it as being genuine then you are also causing
causing real issue and strife and pain to those that are genuine trans people, you know, genuine transgender I mean, I know people out there will say there's no such thing as genuine transition because you can't transition from one biological sex to the other, and that's true. You can't. You can take hormones, you can take the operations and whatnot. That, that's what they're doing. They're attempting to appear as the opposite sex. They know that they can't become the opposite sex. Those are the people that I class as the genuine transitioners. This other mob that have now decided to drop the identity tag, throw sexual preference and mix that up with their gender identities and then call it gender. And then also you set the word man, woman, boy, girl uh, uh, from sex, biological sex and throw that in with gender, muddying the waters for everyone else, and then hiding behind the trans flag to get that support, building their own communities online to get that support and supporting each other, using YouTube and other social media rules for protective classes and uh, hate speech to silence anyone else that speaks against it. Even the genuine transitioner can't speak against this nonsense of the trans trender because they too will get turned on. But there's also another danger. That other danger is these trans trenders that are really just doing it for social media clicks and to fit in. It's probably popular at school and it's the in thing and so on. But now to prove to the world that they're not a trans trender and they're a genuine transitioner, they will go on hormones and drugs and puberty blockers and fucking, you know, go and get things cut off and changed and altered and mutilated at very young ages when they're not really ready for it and they're not thinking forward about the consequences and they're not genuinely wanting to transition from one biological sex to the other. It's all just a, a show to prove that they are. That said, some of them have convinced themselves that they genuinely are, or their community has convinced them that they are, which a lot of regret comes into play down the track. I feel bad for those people. So you've got the genuine biological transitioner, and then you've got these online trans trenders, which used to have a separate gender identity and gender preference that has now been merged into multiple genders that they claim that they're transitioning to and from. They even say that the gender fluid between them, and this has all been accepted. Now, I'm not saying that you can't feel that way. What I'm saying is it's not a different biological sex, not a different gender, as we used to use that term to mean biological sex. But it goes one step further. Now they add different pronouns and they make up their own little pronouns for all their, their, their little feelings. You know, I, I feel like this gender identity and this gender identity has these pronouns now and I feel more comfortable being called that. Fuck off. There's only two biological sexes. Ergo, there's only two biological pronouns. A genuine, real transitioner will tell you if they were born a male and they are striving to transition into a female, they want to be called her, she, for that reason. That's it. There's no other pronouns that need to be used for genuine transitioners. Biological pronouns work for everyone. Male, female, gay, straight, bi, or transitioning. Biological pronouns, he and her, work for everyone. This new trans trender shit? No, fuck that off right away. But we can't, can we? Because the left has clinged on to this social parasite and has promoted it and got behind it and is not understanding what the right is saying. Sure, Science can say, oh, gender is separate, which we agree with. Fine. Okay. We'll take that as a, a, a preference, you know, a gender identity. We'll accept that. But then science goes, oh, well, gender's also a woman. It's like, fucking make up your mind, eh? So now we can't say a trans woman is not a real woman because that's bigoted. When what we're trying to say is a trans woman is not a biological female. Is that what we need to say now to be more clear so the left understands? Surely the left understands, especially scientists like you, Dave, you know what the right means, don't you? And now that I've gone through this, Dave, can you not understand the problems and issues that have arisen from all of this? And again, I'm not transphobic. I'm not scared of trans people. A phobia is an irrational fear. I'm fearful of what young kids and people might do to themselves based on being a trans trender and buying into this nonsense, but I'm not calling the genuine transitioner fake or nonsense. Can you see the difference? I hope so. And another fear that we have is that you and other people on the left don't see the difference and don't see the issues. And by trying to do the right thing, you end up hurting and damaging a lot of people that shouldn't have mutilated themselves. Remember, 
the genuine trans person. They just wanted to transition. They didn't want a spotlight on them, but now they've got a spotlight on them thanks to all these trans trenders and the left embracing this bullshit and then the medical industry. Some of it just wants to go with it to make a profit. And that's a whole other rabbit hole. I hope I've given you enough here, Dave, to understand what a lot of the right is concerned about and a lot of the normal people that aren't on the right or the left, just genuine normal people are concerned about this shit. They see it happening. And no, we're not saying that the science is wrong. You're right. Biology is correct. There are only two sexes. Gender identity, as it was called and known as, is in the head. Those aren't different sexes. Those are feelings. We shouldn't have to use pronouns for feelings. We can use biological pronouns. Hey, why aren't you guys respecting the rights wanting to use biological pronouns? You know, respect goes both ways, doesn't it? Anyway, we're going to get back to your video. And I'm sorry for my rant, but I, I needed to rant. And none of my rant disagrees with the science you have presented. Some of my definitions for words may be different, but I hope I've clarified those during the actual rant itself. Now, there's probably only one other thing that I need to bring up that is pissing the right off with these changes in words and definitions and so on and so on. It first starts with sex and gender is separate. They're different. They're different from each other. And we're like, okay, all right, no worries. They're, they're different. We'll play along. So sex and gender are different. And then it's like, oh, I've got 400 different genders and you've got to use my pronouns. And we're like, uh, no, fuck your pronouns. We're using biological pronouns. And they're like, oh, but it's not going to change anything. It's not going to interfere with anything. And then next thing you know, we've got documents like licenses and stuff in different places around the world getting their sex changed on their licenses that say sex to what their gender is. Why are you changing sex on legal documents if gender and sex are different? Why is a doctor assigning no gender at birth when the doctor should be just saying the baby is female, the baby is male? That's it. You know, this is a shit that, that starts creeping in and pissing the right off. Now, what's the answer to this, Dave? You know, you're not going to be able to fix or address any of these issues or come to some kind of middle ground where the left and right can fix and help each other. You know, it could be some kind of test, mental tests and stuff to make sure someone is genuine wanting to transition and not just some kind of trans trender as I call them but you can't fix it you can't address it if you don't know the issues from the other side and I hope this rant has brought up a few of those issues that you can later on look into in your own time again no hate no ill will I like your channel I follow your channel I agree with you most of the time and I know your video reply wasn't to address anything that I've been ranting about. You just wanted to do a video with the biological sexes. I get that. But I'm hoping that me bringing this up, you may stop calling the right bigots when they're bringing things up and just look into those things and see what the issues are and where we can meet. Now, I'm not saying they aren't bigots on the right. There certainly are some bigots on the right and there are some extreme activists and bigots on the left as well. But just to paint everyone in a broad brush, let's try not to do that. And I, I realize I've done that myself. I'm just trying to see how and if there is a way that both sides can see each other's issues and try to meet in the middle because there are genuine issues on both sides. And I'm not even fucking American. I'm viewing this from outside. I'm in Australia, mate, watching what's going on over there in America because what happens in America generally trickles down to the rest of us. Yeah, and I know, I know, Australia's got its own fucking issues too. That's not what this video is about. Let's get back into your video, and I do apologize for my nearly 15-minute rant. Praise the Lord, brother. Amen to you, suit. Don't you fucking amen me. Your Lord and God is a fake and a fraud. I'll pray for you, brother suit. Yeah, you do that. Now, I guess I've offended everybody. But before we go back to the video, Dave, there's one other thing I just want to bring up. Those of you that bring up pronouns on your videos and your profiles and your shows, it's not necessary. We don't go up and introduce ourselves normally and say, hi, my name's Joe, my pronouns are him, her. We don't do that. We've, we've never done that. If someone is trying to present as a female and looks female, I'll respect that and address them with the proper pronouns. Her, she. If someone looks male, same deal. Him, his. If I can't work out what the fuck I'm looking at, it's going to be an it. But generally, 
generally we address people by their fucking name, especially on shows and call-in shows and such. Like, I've been watching a lot of the atheist uh, shows and they bring up, this is my caller, David, he, him. So what are you bringing that up for? It's not necessary. In the actual call, you never use the pronouns. All you're doing is virtue signaling. That's what you're doing. You know it. We know it. Everybody knows it. There's zero need for it because you're addressing the caller by their name. And by virtue signaling this shit, you're actually giving credence to this bull bullshit trans trenderism and doing harm to real transgender people that only use the pronouns of the biological sex that they're trying to transition to. Just let that sink in and percolate and think about that for a while. Don't instantly snap back. Just let it sit with you. Pronouns that you're promoting is helping the trans trender movement, not the transgenders. I'm not saying you do this personally, just speaking generally from what I've been watching online and seeing online. Okay, let's get back to your video. How dare you? You have now single-handedly began the genocide of millions of trans people. No, I've made a few trans trenders cry for calling their bullshit out. Well, I never. Well, maybe you should. It might loosen you up. Let's get back to the video now. The reason that we are just now becoming equipped to differentiate between the two phenomena is that in the vast majority of humans, somewhere between 99 and 99.9% .9 of all people, gender identity aligns with biological sex. So gender identity has a neurochemical basis because it's a feeling and feelings can be traced back to brain activity. Uh, okay, sure. I'll buy that. Thank you. You are officially accepting the main point of my entire video. Anything else? Yeah, um, there is something else on your chart where you've got 99 to 99.9% .9 of all people are cisgender. You've got sex and gender. Both of them have the word male and female. So now is biological sex and gender the same? Are they still different? Or has gender now usurped the term male and female so that we can't even use that? Also, cisgender might be a scientific term, but the trans trenders are using it as a slur. Cis is now a slur by the trans trender community against the 99.9% .9 of all people. You know, the majority, the normals, as we call it. The question is whether those feelings reflect reality. That's the question. An anorexic person feels that she's overweight. The feeling is a biological phenomenon in the sense that it's happening in her brain in the same sense that a man feels like a woman. But we understand in her case that the feelings are disordered, incorrect, wrong, delusional. And so we work to treat her brain, her feelings, to more accurately align them with reality. Matt, this is the best you can do. In the case of someone who is anorexic, there is a disconnect with something that is objectively measurable and quantifiable in the external world. If they feel like they weigh 300 pounds and they objectively weigh 100 pounds, that's not the same thing as gender identity, which occurs exclusively in the brain. Oh, what other brilliant analogies have your followers thrown at me? Can I identify as rich if I'm poor? No, your bank account is based in external reality. Can I identify as president if I'm not? No, people voting is based in external reality. Can I identify as Chinese if I'm white? No, your genome and birthplace exist in external reality. Getting the pattern? So, I'm sorry, this whole bit is an enormous miss. Come on, Dave, I, I think you know what Matt's trying to say here. He's trying to say that the trans trender who believes that they are another gender in reality are not that sex because there are only two sexes because a trans trender, while they claim and you claim gender is separate, will believe that their gender is their sex. And this is evident by things like trying to change legal documents that state sex, aka the driver's license or entering women's events. So we know what he's trying to say, and I'm sure you know what he's trying to say. Oh, I better correct myself. Entering biological female events. But even using that word now doesn't really matter, does it? Since in your own video, you stated gender and sex 
are both using the terms female and male. So do we now say biologically XX and biologically XY because you've usurped every other fucking term, not you specifically, just a generalized you. And it's amazing that I have to say stuff like that and I have to say stuff like that so people like yourself can't play word games here. But let's keep uh, listening anyway. The unfortunate linguistic coincidence is that we use terms like man and woman or male and female in describing both of these phenomena. That is where the confusion arises, when people insist that one term must encapsulate both phenomena at once. So you agree, both terms we've used interchangeably for fucking forever and now that they've been separated into many different things, one side is using the old way and the other side is using the new way, but ignoring what they know and you know that the other side is referring to. So the left is just picking and choosing and using words and playing games while the right is saying, hang on, we're referring to biological sex because you guys are wanting to separate sex and gender. Ergo, we don't give a fuck how many genders you've got. That doesn't mean that you've got that many sexes. There's only two sexes. So when the right refers to a woman entering a woman's event, they are talking about the biological aspect, what exists externally, as you put it. So come on, you know it, we know it, everybody fucking knows it. Why are we playing these games? You're smart, you know what's going on. Why is it that you can't meet in the middle and try and figure out how we can fix this issue? I know how we can fix it. Let's move gender identity back to what it fucking was. Gender identity, leaving gender and sex interchangeable as it once was and those terms as they once were. Therefore, it's separate. Gender identity is separate to gender. Done. Problem fucking solved. So when someone asks what is a woman, expecting to get a very simple answer that children can understand, they are sorely mistaken. The answer requires a discussion of genetics and neurochemistry. That is where the confusion is. So how about we simplify it for everybody, including our children? Let's go back to gender identity. Gender identity is in your head, how you feel. And that doesn't conflict with the science, which you've already pointed out. Okay, you can feel like a male or a female or a man or a woman. These terms you can use as your gender identity, your feeling. However, the feeling you're having does not make you that sex or gender. Let's throw sex and gender back to what it was. Biological male, biological female. Doesn't that just fix everything? And let's add to that these gender identities that don't make you a different sex also don't make you trans. That's why I call these people trans trenders. So if gender identity doesn't make you trans, because a straight person can have a gender identity and still be straight, they can feel more feminine and still be straight. A bi person can also do the same. Same with a gay person. A gay person might feel that they're not attracted to anyone and thus they would dub themselves as non-binary. That's in their head, that's fine, but they're still a gay male. So it doesn't change anything and they're not trans. The only real trans person would be someone changing from one biological sex to the other. And since we've now thrown gender back in with biological sex in this example, then we can easily say that a trans person is transitioning from one gender to the other and there are only two genders. And if there are only two genders, then there are only two needed pronouns, which work for everybody. We don't need pronouns for your gender identity. See where I'm going with this? It all makes sense and fits with the science, doesn't it, Dave? Come on, Dave, you know that will fix everything, but you don't want to fix everything, do you? You want something to argue, to hate on, or am I wrong there? Really, you and the rest of the scientists and the left should be getting on board with this idea that I've thrown out here, reclaiming sex and gender as one entity and reusing the term gender identity and shunning those that are trying to be trans, the trans trenders, which are hurting the real transgender people. You know why you should be getting on board with this? Because the normal 
average person looks at both sides. They look at the left and they go, what the fuck is it with these wankers and their 460 genders? And they don't even know what a woman is. Now, okay, you can play word games and be technically correct and end your stream with a smile, but you're not fucking fixing anything. Not for the normal person. The normal person is looking at that and go, oh, yeah, I'm not going to vote for that. And then they look at the right and they go, yeah, I agree with that. Oh, that makes sense. What the fuck, Jesus? You want to impose Christianity? You can fuck right off too. So both extremes, the average normal person is looking at it and going, oh, I don't know which way to go. I don't know. I, I don't want fucking this shit taught in my classrooms, but that shit with 400 genders and mutilating children, yeah, I, I don't want that either. And I think I might just go with the Christian wankers. So if the left fixes bullshit and call it out for what it is and say, yeah, okay, there is, there is only two genders and gender and sex is the same thing. You can't change your fucking documents. Your gender identity is just a feeling and that works with the science too. If you fixed all that, you'd have the normal people, the average person that's looking at both sides on board with this. And that also includes calling out this crap with, oh, I'm a woman, so I'm going to compete in the woman's sports. No, biology. Stick with biology. You're a scientist, aren't you? Stick with that. If you stuck with that and it all made sense to the normal average person, you'd have so many more voters over in your side because the majority of people don't give a fuck about Jesus and that bullshit. But they will vote for it over 400 genders and mutilating children. But the left can just call me a transphobe and a bigot and a Nazi and a right winger and nothing gets solved because all they're doing is calling a huge part of the population, which is in the middle, the center, the average Joe, right wing bigots when they could be fixing the problem and the definitions and then getting that huge voting base to side with them against the right wing. But even more than just the voting base, it's about fixing the issues with the real trans people being made a mockery of by the trans trenders and also fixing the issue and addressing the issue of the trans trenders manipulating the young population, the younger population, the kids into transitioning, mutilating them Themselves. So there's a whole bunch of issues that can be fixed that will still fit with the science. But what do I know? I'm just a dumb Aussie cunt. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry you find it offensive, Dave, but yes, I do deny the concept of gender as it was conceived by John Money. You accept that concept as gospel. You're offended that anybody disagrees with it. Again with this guy. I don't know him or care. The concept of gender does not depend on what one guy said. You're like creationists who try to debunk evolution by defaming Darwin, as though modern evolutionary biology is just people reciting origin of species from memory. Either address what I'm saying without tethering it to some disingenuous talking point, or admit that you can't and have to poison the well instead. Dave, it doesn't matter if you know the guy or not. You should be looking into him. Matt's point is you accept the gospel from this guy. And it's a lot more than just this guy. But you accept the gospel of the gender identity and stuff like that, which you do. You don't deny that, do you? And yet, the concept of gender doesn't depend on one guy. He's just pointing out the origin of it, which expanded to other people, of course. But the point is, the concept of it, you accept. And now you're just dismissing what Matt said because he used that one guy that you know nothing about. And you're then going to move on without addressing the point and bring up the Christians and what they do with creationism, Darwinism and all that to essentially poison your own well. I mean, you know what he's saying. You know where he's going with it. So how about you either address what he's saying or admit that you can't and continue poisoning the well too? Meanwhile, you say that the definition of the word woman is complicated, but please note that it's complicated is not a definition. So you still haven't defined it. No, I did. I defined it in the context of sex which is the chromosomal definition that you like, and then I defined it in the context of gender, which is anyone who identifies with a gender identity of female. This is associated specifically with brain development. The definition of woman is only complicated because you're making it complicated. And yeah, you did define it under the definition of sex, which 
we can all agree on. And then you decided to define it under the term of gender and then go on and speak about gender identity. So what we're saying, what I'm saying is remove gender and move that back to sex. So sex and gender mean the same thing, biology, and leave gender identity, which you've brought up as the term for what you're speaking about, which still respects the science and makes sense and pleases the other side. It also doesn't confuse children. I don't know why you are wanting to confuse children. So gender identity is associated specifically with brain development, your feelings in your head. That works for us. Let's continue. You and all your willfully ignorant followers can pretend that there is no scientific basis for this, or you could just type some things into Google Scholar and check the literature for yourself. Here's one, Neurobiology of Gender Identity and Sexual Orientation. Let's browse through some other titles, shall we? Sexual Differentiation of the Human Brain, Relation to Gender Identity. Ooh, this one talks about the hypothalamic uncinate nucleus. You know about that, right, Matt? Oh, and this one is about the human infundibular nucleus. Brain feminization, I wonder what that means. And the papers just keep coming. If you disagree with the findings of these papers, I look forward to reading your peer-reviewed rebuttal overturning an entire subfield of neurobiology with your non-existent expertise. Um, Dave, nobody is disagreeing with the science. Even in your own papers, the majority of them, if not all of them, state gender identity. We're saying don't mix gender identity up with the word gender. Keep gender and sex together, meaning biological chromosomes. Gender identity is its own separate thing, which we agree with. We agree with the science on that. How is that so difficult to understand? Once again, not directed at you specifically, Dave, just a general question. Let's reiterate, because this really is the main lie for you and everyone who mindlessly repeats, what is a woman, condescendingly on a video they didn't watch which defined it. Whoa, 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 hold up a minute, Dave. Is you not understanding what Matt is referring to and where he's coming from, your not understanding that makes what Matt's saying a lie. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? And people that you claim are mindlessly repeating what is a woman, how do you know that they're mindlessly repeating if you don't understand why they are saying it and why they are asking it? That's a bit unfair too. And as for being condescending, uh, who's being condescending? And as for a video that they didn't watch, well, Matt explained himself and you cut that part out. So did you watch it or did you watch it and not listen to it? I mean, I'm hoping by this point in my video, you are understanding and comprehending why they are asking what is a woman and what they are referring to when they ask what is a woman. Let's continue. Earlier, you admitted that you're cool with sex and gender being different things, and you are aware that we use the words man and woman with reference to both terms, and I gave you both definitions in my original video and just now. Yeah, Dave, um, most of us were cool with separating sex and gender, you know, to try to conform with what the left was trying to push. We didn't expect that the left would be claiming the biological terms like woman, man, male, female, boy, girl, for gender as well, or not understanding when we use those terms, we are referring to the biological sex. Instead, when we do use those terms, the left don't listen to it being referred to as a biological thing. Instead, they apply it to gender. So if they are separate things, surely we should be able to use it in reference to one of those specific categories. However, since this is confusing people, especially children, why don't we just bring gender and sex back together to mean these terms and keep gender identity separate? You just didn't like what you heard and are refusing to interface with it so you can placate all the people who were pestering you to respond to my video, even though you have nothing legitimate to say. But Dave, did you listen to what he had to say or did you just dismiss what he had to say and not really listen? Because I do believe there are things that Matt says which are legitimate things to talk about and discuss. And if both sides aren't going to listen to each other, then we're going to get nowhere. 
Now, Dave, Matt does have stuff to say. It's just that you've cut some of it out. How much? I'm not sure yet. But if you're replying to Matt, isn't it fair to let him speak and then reply to what he said? All of it? Okay, we're going to be rewinding back to where you spoke about the obesity person and so on, and we'll let Matt continue his thoughts. We don't say that the anorexic is trans-obese, and we don't call actually obese people cis-obese. We understand that there's physical reality and then feelings, and sometimes feelings are out of step with reality, and when that's the case, we usually understand that the feelings are the issue, they are the problem to be solved, and so we try to solve them. Will Professor Dave address that objection in this video? Spoiler, no, he won't. In fact, he won't honestly engage with literally any objection raised by the opponents of his ideology at all. Won't even try. So, Dave, what Matt is discussing there is reality versus what's in your head, aka what you said about gender identity that has all these papers written about it that is up in the head versus biological sex, which for Matt is reality, which you knew, but you didn't really want to address it in that manner, did you? Which is why Matt's saying that you didn't define what a woman was because you didn't address what he was speaking about. Let's hear more from Matt that was cut out. So you still haven't defined it. I never insisted on a simple definition. I simply insist on a definition, any kind of definition, some sort of meaning. You can give me a complicated one. That's fine. Go ahead. Try me. Give me a complicated definition. I, I, I'm perfectly fine with that. But you must have some definition, whereas you provide none at all. See, this is a major problem for you, Dave, and let me try to explain why. It's a problem because, and listen closely, you are using the word. Do you see why that's an issue? You say the word woman is complicated and apparently ambiguous and hard to understand, yet you use it. You refer to women. You talk about women. I bet you'd even say that you believe in women's rights. Would you say that? I bet you would. This must mean that you have some solid, comprehensible idea of what a woman is, yet you never explain that idea. That's a very big problem for you, Dave. You're using a word that you cannot or will not define, which means either that you're hopelessly confused and we should dismiss you and your arguments for that reason, or you're evasive and disingenuous and we should dismiss you and your arguments for that reason. Either way, you and your arguments are in really bad shape right now. You see, Dave, what Matt was trying to say is not this is what sex is and sex can use the word woman and this is what gender is and all these papers on gender ideology and they can use woman too. He was asking you what you define a woman as when someone says to you, what is a woman? He was asking you to give your thoughts on what you believe a woman is. And of course, in the spirit of fairness, there was part of your initial video that was cut out of Matt's reply. So let's play that now. When people complain about men choosing to be women, this is very offensive. It is a denial of the concept of gender. It is no different than the conversation that was happening surrounding homosexuality a few decades ago. Conservatives would say that homosexuality is just demons or temptations from Satan, and that heterosexuality is the only way people can truly be. Today, this seems totally ridiculous because homosexuality and other sexual orientations have become accepted and normalized even among many conservatives. The same will happen for transgenderism because it undeniably exists. Why is it offensive if people complain about men choosing to be women? People have a right to complain about that, especially if it goes against biology and starts interfering with sports and laws. Don't people have a right to be offended that someone is trying to imitate their sex, their biological sex, and infiltrate their sports or change the laws for biological sex? I'm sorry, but people have a right to be offended at that. We're not denying gender. It is a denial of your concept of gender because in our minds, gender and sex are one, but we are not denying sex, biological sex. We are not denying your gender identity. Do you see the nuance there? 
And it is a huge difference between the conversation of homosexuality. You're trying to usurp terms and throw it into gender and separate gender and sex and use all these different gender identities as some kind of gender and then rework it back into sex under laws and sports. So there is a big difference, which you may not be seeing or you are seeing, but you're choosing to ignore. None of us are saying real trans do not exist. Trans do exist. They transition from the biological sex that they were born as to the other biological sex, the only other one, not to one of these magical genders out there or what they should be called gender identities. And how is it different? Well, a straight person that is not going to transition can have a gender identity. They can feel more feminine, more masculine. I've said this before in this video. So does a straight male who feels more feminine now become trans and get all the rights and protections under the trans umbrella and the trans flag. No, they're just a more feminine male, a more feminine straight male. Do you see where I'm going with this? Do you see where the right is going with this? Surely you can see this by now since I've gone over this a few times in this video. The acceptance for suppressed sexual orientations came first because around 10% of people are gay, whereas a much smaller percentage of people are trans. But this is the natural progression of societal evolution. Nearly every binary has been shown to actually be a spectrum, and it doesn't matter how uncomfortable it makes conservative people. Society will continue to shift until our language and policies reflect actual human nature, not the tiny period puritanical box that has historically been thrust upon us. Okay, 10% are gay, much smaller percentage of trans. But when we speak of a binary being on a spectrum, we're not talking about if you feel that you want to transition to the other side or if you are attracted to the same side or both. The spectrum is up in your head and how you feel. Do you feel more masculine? Do you feel more feminine? Do you feel neither? That's all in the head. And a straight person can feel that way. A bi person can feel that way. A gay person can feel that way. And someone that is transitioning can feel that way. It's always been this way. We just called them tomboys and other names. That doesn't mean the girl who is portraying herself as a tomboy was not straight or is a lesbian or wanted to transition. Come on, this isn't rocket science. Society will shift to reflect what is real and legit, not the language the left want to impose on people, but what makes sense and still will be accurate to the science. But currently, the tiny puritanical box is being forced upon us, aka law changes based on bullshit that is in the head, as well as fucking around with sports events. Okay, so we've caught up a little bit. Let's now go back to Dave's reply to Matt's reply to Dave's original video. Wait, what? Nearly every binary is a spectrum? Like what? Sexuality, undeniably so. And sorry, also gender. Do your dance of denial, nobody cares. Sexuality, as in how you're feeling, how you want to present, what you're feeling up inside your head, not your biological sex. Gender identity, not gender as Matt and I would see it, because Matt and I would see gender as sex and gender identity differently. But do your own dance of denial, nobody cares. Maybe people should care because this is where the issues are and this is how they can be solved by looking into the definitions of words. But there was a whole section that was cut out from Matt's reply, so let's go back to that. Wait, what? Nearly every binary is a spectrum? Like what? No, I'm not uncomfortable with that. I just think it's nonsense. That's it's just, that's it's just, that's, I mean, in a certain way, I'm uncomfortable around people saying stupid things, uh, but... That's all we mean by that. What are the binaries that turned out to be spectrums? Don't say gender because that's begging the question. I don't agree with John Money's concept of gender at all. It's not that I think gender is a binary. It's that I think it's a totally useless and incoherent concept that should be put back into the world of linguistics and grammar where it belongs. As for sex, if that's not a binary, then what is it? There are males and females. There are those who are of the nature to become pregnant and those who are of the nature to impregnate. There's no third sex, it's a binary. So where is the spectrum that everyone thought was a binary? Can you give one example? 
So what Matt's saying here is it's not that he doesn't agree that gender can be on a spectrum and you feel one way or you feel the other. It's that feelings are irrelevant. And he's speaking of the facts of a sex only being binary, male or female. You can only be one or the other, unless, of course, there was an error and nature was trying to produce a boy and fucked up. Back to your video, Dave. As for the claim that 10% of people are gay, where did you come up with that? Where'd you get that from? Well, I'll tell you where you got it from. Uh, you got that from Alfred Kinsey, who made that claim in his book, Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, which is the same book that contains a chart documenting the orgasms of infants. He arrives at his arguments and his figures about human sexuality by interviewing sex offenders and prison inmates and lying and pretending that he surveyed a cross-section of the population, but he didn't. So that's where you're getting your information, Professor. No, but sure, whine about Kinsey, lie about where statistics come from, pretend that only one person has ever decided to ask this question or gather data about it. Anyone who says things that you don't like got their information from a pedophile, right? I don't know if it's concerning to you or not that a lot of this shit can be traced back to several different pedophiles. I don't know if that's alarming to you or not, but it is certainly alarming to many of us. Let's continue. Now, as promised, with the indictment of conservatives complete, I turn to liberals and the missteps they are enacting that are preventing resolution. Number one, please stop saying things like gender is a social construct. No, it is not. It is a biological construct. Society can't turn you trans any more than it can turn you gay. Gender is determined biologically. It is simply that, again, gender is not determined merely by the sex chromosomes and is an incredibly complex neurochemical phenomenon. So let's talk about it honestly. You're right, Dave. Society can't turn you gay or turn you trans, but it can force you or manipulate you or trick you or lead you down a path to a decision that you would not normally make because you aren't one of those things. Yeah, we should be talking about it honestly, including what you dub as gender, which is in the mind, and we say is gender identity, which you also agree with, and your papers that you cited also claim it's gender identity. So let's be honest and speak honestly about it. And let's throw gender back with the category of sex and separate gender and sex as one referring to biological, physical sex and the other gender identity as biological, mental stuff, feelings. Gender roles are a social construct, that all men must be this way and do these things, and all women must be this way and do these things, that is a social construct, and it is one that became obsolete immediately upon evolving beyond a hunter-gatherer society. It has only persisted due to deeply rooted misogyny and the desire to treat women as private property. Rage against gender roles as a social construct all you like. I'm right there with you. But stop saying that gender itself is a social construct. It is biological. The majority of people these days don't believe that a woman has to do certain things or a man has to do certain things. That said, there is evidence to show that men and women gravitate towards different occupations and different toys and different things. Not all, but the majority do. In addition, sex is a much more easily definable biological construct, and we must acknowledge that when an individual that is of the male biological sex identifies as trans, their biological sex remains male. By identifying as trans, their chromosomes do not change, no matter what surgeries they choose to undergo. We rightfully refer to them as women because most of us have decided that it is appropriate for a society to respect their gender identity over their biological sex as a linguistic formality. If one's sex is male and their gender is female, why not refer to them as female and address them as they wish? This is a simple and obvious courtesy. But their sex does not change, nor is their transgenderism selected.
Now this part that we just saw was strangely missing from Matt's reply since it pretty much agrees with everything Matt agrees with. And I agree, your biological sex cannot change regardless of if you get surgery or multiple hormones for the rest of your life. Ergo, there are only two sexes and you can only transition from one to the other, but you can't become the other. You can only get cosmetic surgery and hormones to appear like the other. We don't don't have to refer to them as the opposite sex that they want to appear as, but the majority of us do if we look at them and they pass, as in we visually recognize them as a female or a male. If we don't know what the fuck you are, then we're probably going to say, fucking hell, what the fuck have they done? But we're not going to say that publicly to them because the majority of us are polite and don't go out of our way to insult people in public. That said, enforcing it in group chats and online discourse is also wrong. How dare you decide what the other person can or can't say? If they want to be disrespectful, fine. Let them. If they want to use only biological pronouns, regardless of the person transitioning, that's their right. It's your right to kick them out of the chat, sure, if that chat belongs to you. But on a public chat, you don't get to ban someone or request a ban of someone because they have a different viewpoint. Fuck off. Now, I'm all for being courteous, but when it crosses the line, as stated multiple times in this video, is when you have someone who is not a biological female competing in biological female sports or trying to change the laws in this specific example, sex on a license or trying to get doctors to say they can't assign a gender at birth, as it's fucking obvious that they can state quite clearly, as they have done for multiple years, what the sex of the baby is. When liberals attempt to decouple gender or even sex from its biological basis, they give conservatives license for mockery because they can then rightfully criticize what seems to them like a vague and meaningless declaration. That's why smug, ignorant conservatives who make a living stirring up hatred amongst bigots get so much traction by cutting together cherry-picked compilations of young people saying silly things, like gender is a social construct. Because because they get to go look at the dumb liberals, and it is a rare instance where they aren't completely wrong. This emboldens them and makes them feel justified in pushing other talking points that are completely wrong. Young people saying silly things or the left backing silly things like being able to transition to a gender identity, 400 odd different gender identities, and we can trans to any of them. No, that does not make you trans. And finally, on a cultural note, I think that we need to stop flipping out about innocuous things that comedians say. Let us reserve our anger for those who are in denial of science and are attempting to limit human rights. When someone attacks Dave Chappelle on stage in my town of Los Angeles in the wake of controversy surrounding alleged anti-trans rhetoric, and he, off the cuff, shouts, It was a trans man! That's not a hateful remark. He was reacting to the situation, which is what comedians do. You are free to decide for yourself whether or not you find any particular comedy to be funny. Comedy is subjective, but whether or not something should be deemed offensive has an element of objectivity to it, and that remark does not qualify. I'm not here to do an in-depth analysis of all the alleged anti-trans jokes from all the comedians on Netflix, as I haven't even heard all of them, but in general, let's just tone it down a notch. Yeah, I agree, Dave. Uh, comedy is subjective. You don't have to find it funny. If you don't find it funny, don't laugh, don't watch, don't go back, don't give them your money. But don't fucking cancel them or don't label them something that they are not. And as for science, nobody is disagreeing with the science. We're disagreeing with the labeling and the fact that you guys seem to want to support people claiming that they are transgender by transitioning into gender identities. Gender identities everyone can have. Straight, gay, bi, doesn't fucking matter. These are what we call trans trenders. This is what we disagree with. And making policies, laws, and changing sport events, and so on and so forth, based on people that believe they can transition in their head from one gender identity 
to another is stupid and does real damage to how the general public view legitimate transgender people. You know, those that actually transition from one biological sex to the other. So nobody is denying the science and we're not trying to limit rights. As for offensive, I mean, it really comes down to the intention, doesn't it? And most people don't intend to offend. And if you take offense at everything, that's your fucking problem. Not the person that is saying whatever they said that offended you. You know, we've got a saying in Australia, harden the fuck up. So I agree, Dave, we should be toning it down a notch. That includes your side that decide to label people as bigots because what you believe that they believe is bigotry when you probably don't really know what they actually believe because it seems like you're not looking into it. So both sides stop fueling the fire, hey? Additionally, regarding the controversy with sports, trans women who have gone through puberty as males experiencing the dramatic hormonal changes characteristic of any sexually dimorphic species objectively have an unfair biological advantage over female athletes. I personally couldn't care less about sports and who is competing against whom, but people who say that trans women have an unfair athletic advantage are absolutely correct, and to deny this makes any objections to transphobia totally meaningless because you are refusing to acknowledge what trans people are. As to where trans women should compete, I don't have any solutions because, again, I don't care about sports. But there is a reason that men and women do not compete with one another in almost any sport. So if you are a fan of sports, try to respect that. I too couldn't give a fuck about sports. I really don't follow it. But I agree. Biology is a thing. And a biological male has way more advantages than a biological female in certain sports. This doesn't mean we need to use puberty blockers to stop children going through puberty, which ends up ruining them because their body doesn't develop what it naturally needs. So you end up with a biological male that has gone through puberty blockers and not formed a penis that is big enough to be used in any capacity, let alone be inverted, and so on and so forth. I know that Dave knows this. I'm surprised he didn't bring up puberty blockers, but I suppose there's certain topics he won't touch based on his alignment to the left. I may be wrong, just a feeling. And again, I agree, Dave. Not acknowledging that trans women are different goes against what the point is of a trans woman, which is why... I say a trans woman is not a woman because you need a prefix. And don't give me this cis woman and trans woman bullshit. You know what I mean. As for where trans people should compete, well, hey, it's obvious. Create a new category called trans. What, there's only going to be one runner? Too fucking bad. This will stop all these wankers that are pretending and changing their gender because they they never made it as a real man, so they want to enter the women's competition so they can win something. That will eliminate those fuckers. Go on, call me transphobic. You know I'm not. And yeah, there is a reason men and women don't compete against each other. It's fucking obvious. Praise be to God, we have a winner. Dave is one of us. He'll be voting for Trump next. Oh my God, Dave is a transphobe. I knew it. He hates me. I no longer loves him. He is just as bad as Trump. His indictment of conservatives was complete without ever approaching the vicinity of any one of our actual arguments. And then he turns to criticize liberals to prove how fair and objective he is by slamming them for not being liberal enough. This is astounding. It's the dumbest and most blatantly dishonest thing you said in the entire video. When you want to make fun of liberals, you would gladly agree that gender is not a social construct because you want to claim that trans people are just mentally ill and transness is made up by society. But then when I say it because I want to pick on them, all of a sudden you have to disagree and pull something out of your ass, like not liberal enough, because you don't want to address the biological basis of transness because you can't. What unbelievable hypocrisy. Dave, I think there's a few parts where both parties are talking past each other or not acknowledging what the other party is saying or even understanding what the other party is attempting to say. So there's probably a little bit of misunderstanding in there, to be honest. And why did you stop here? Of course, you can't show anything beyond this point in my video because it's all things your viewers would agree with. 
I specifically talk about how trans people can't change their sex. Can't show that, can you? You want your followers to continue to spew ignorant straw men about how liberals think men can have babies and other such tripe. If only you had shown them this bit of my video that none of them watched, hmm? I agree, Dave. It's strange that Matt stopped there and didn't show that you agree with what Matt says about biological sex and trans people not being able to change their biological sex. I would think that would be something Matt would want to share. But I did make sure that I showed it all in this video, Dave, because what you say is important when it comes to the biology, the science. As for men can't have babies, it's true. Biological men can't have babies and the right wouldn't be spewing this shit if there weren't people on the left promoting this shit. There's always two sides to a coin, Dave. And hopefully I've shown both sides of this coin. Let's hope people watch this video and see those sides of this coin. And the parts about comedians and sports? No way, you've got to keep those viewers outrageously polarized and foaming at the mouth. How else are you going to get those views? I agree, and it is unfortunate that it happens, and it happens on both sides. It seems hate sells. Hate brings in clicks and views, which equals money. And when the YouTuber focuses on the money, they seem to forget about what is true, what is real. We can only hope that this sort of stuff changes. He also says that society can't turn you trans, uh, totally ignoring the fact that in our society currently, and only in our society, only in the West, there has been a many-fold increase in trans identification. If that's not society turning people trans, what is it, Dave? Well, Matt, see if you can wrap your brain around this concept. When a society is accepting of a particular identity, more people will feel free to publicly identify that way. You know, like how gay people just suddenly started popping up everywhere in the 70s and 80s and having their own places to gather out in public? Was society turning people gay, Matt? No, people just felt like there was finally a lower risk of getting lynched or even murdered just because of who they like to have sex with. I get the feeling you would have been the type to lynch some gay people back in the 50s, am I right? With trans people, it's no different. They have only become marginally accepted in the past decade or so, so that's the increase. Yeah, Dave, I and many can wrap our brains around the concept of a society accepting something and more coming out, but I don't believe it's equivalent to what you're saying because society now has the internet where people want to get famous and they want clicks and views and they can push things on people faster and certain trends spread faster. And so I believe that there's a lot that's not equivalent here and the rise of trans is a lot faster than what you would expect it to be in the West. And I would say most of that is because of the trans trenders. If you remove the trans trenders, you will get the legitimate amount of trans people in the world. But there was a bit of Matt's reply that was cut out here. So let's continue with that. Now, I don't know what you'd say to that because as always, and like literally every other gender ideologue I've ever spoken to, and I guarantee I've spoken personally to many more people on your side than you've spoken to on my side, but like all of them, you don't attempt to grapple with any of the logical inconsistencies of your position. But I ask again anyway, if society can't turn you trans, why are we experiencing an unprecedented skyrocketing rise in trans identifications? I think Matt makes some very good points. And now we'll get back to the rest of your reply to this, Dave. And hey, here's a little good faith morsel I'll throw your way. I'm willing to acknowledge that some young people are probably trying on transness like a hat and proclaiming identification as trans when they really aren't. Who knows? And don't start throwing all this kids being mutilated stuff at me. I said absolutely nothing whatsoever in my video about children undergoing surgery. And quite honestly, don't really support it. At least not unless and until developmental psychologists can come up with a set of criteria to confidently diagnose transness based on a suite of neurological and behavioral markers. Yeah, Dave, uh, that's exactly what we're saying. Not some, a lot 
of kids that train trans on as some kind of hat, as you put it. Those are the ones we call trans trenders. And we believe there's a lot more than what it seems you believe there are. Since both sides agree that this is an issue, what are we going to do together to look into this and maybe stop this from happening? And Dave, Matt wasn't throwing child mutilation at you as some kind of got you or anything. He was throwing it out there as there is an issue and he'd like to hear what you have to say about it. And I'm glad that you had something to say about it. And I'm kind of glad that you don't agree with it. If you say that there have always been this many trans people, but they were all in the closet, You'll then have to explain why there was never, ever, at any point, ever, a mass epidemic of people committing suicide because they were not affirmed in their gender identity. There wasn't? How do you know that? People have always committed suicide all through history. How do you know which of them were trans? Only the ones who left notes that said, I'm killing myself because society won't accept trans people until the 21st century? Who are you to determine what percentage of people who have committed suicide over the past several thousand years were trans? Think before you speak. Uh, the topic of suicide. It is interesting to me that there is those on the right that will use suicide saying that they will suicide because they have transitioned, which I don't disagree with. And then on the other side with the left, they also use the suicide argument, but claim that these people suicide because they're not being allowed to trans. To me, it's ironic that both sides are using and playing the suicide card. What are the actual statistics? Do we know? I don't know if we know. Now we'll have to go back to Matt's side of things because there's a bit more that Matt said that was cut out from Dave's video. After all, staple doctrine on the left is that lack of affirmation is dangerous because it causes suicide. Well, then why was that never happening back when there were millions and millions of supposed unaffirmed trans people? i to admit, he brings up some valid points and it does seem to be the doctrine of the left. Now back to your video, Dave. Indeed. Why is the suicide epidemic happening now when trans people are so affirmed? I think it might be people like you, Matt. Gender ideology is a modern Western social construct that didn't exist until it was invented by psychoanalytical quacks and then parroted mindlessly by people like you. No, gender ideology is a dog whistle that people like you use to propagandize others against human rights. People like you, Matt. Hmm, interesting, Dave. Or could it also be people like you, Dave, that aren't listening to what the right is saying and dismissing those detransitioners who end up killing themselves because of the decisions they feel they were forced into? Gender ideology is not a dog whistle. When we speak about gender ideology, we are talking about those that are using their gender identity, what they feel in their mind, and claiming that they are transitioning to it, which the left is then promoting as separate genders, ergo sexes, because licenses and things like legal documents, which specifically say sex, are then getting changed into what their gender is. So there is a gender ideology going on and the sooner you acknowledge what the right is speaking about the sooner both sides can get together and try and nut out a solution and as i said before straight gay bi or trans all of these people regardless of what your sexual preference is or what you want to transition into the only other biological sex all of these people can have their own gender identity meaning they can feel more masculine or they can feel more feminine, or they can feel neither. Any one of us can have our own gender identity. Does that make everybody trans? No, it doesn't. And that's what we're all addressing when we say gender ideology. So no, it is not a fucking dog whistle. And for you just to brush it off as a dog whistle, like most of the left does, is causing more harm and division between both sides. Come on, Dave, you know the science. You should know that even a straight person who is attracted to the opposite sex can have their own gender identity, meaning they can feel like a feminine man, but still be 
be straight and have a sexual preference of a straight woman who feels more masculine. That doesn't make either of these parties trans. So stop with calling this a dog whistle because that is bullshit and does not and will not help either side, especially the genuine trans that are being damaged by these fucking trans trenders, which the left are upholding and promoting. We also mean including forcing people to use stupid pronouns other than the pronouns for our biological sex, which are all genuine trans people need because genuine trans people are only transitioning from one biological sex to the only other biological sex from he to she or from she to he so fuck those other pronouns off there are no they thems that's why we call it gender ideology the sooner you acknowledge that the sooner we can all move fucking forward and try to fix the issue and hopefully eliminate a lot of confusion for children and suicide unless of course you don't really care and you just want to keep this back and forth with hate going Oh, God. And of course, there's more of Matt's reply that was cut out. Yet you, Dave, went on about Matt not showing all of your video. Yet you did the exact same thing. So here is the rest of Matt's reply. Further, while pretending that it affirms and nurtures people, it actually leads them into self-destruction and despair. The evidence bears that out. The evidence is entirely on my side, in fact, and not at all on your side, because on this topic, you are wrong about nearly everything, and your underlying claims are so nonsensical and incoherent that you can't begin to explain them or defend them, and that's why you don't even try. Well, I just did. Anyway, that's all you had to say, and all of it was stupid. So Dave, you claim you tried, and then you state all of what Matt said is stupid. If what you've come out with this with by watching Matt's video is that all of what Matt said is stupid, then you haven't tried, for you obviously didn't understand a word that Matt was saying, or you interpreted what Matt was saying into your own biases of what you believe Matt was speaking about. And this is just another example of both sides talking past each other and not listening. At this point, we've finished with Matt's video in its entirety, and we are just going to continue with Dave's video and finish that off. This could have been done face to face like grown-ups, as I requested by email the day after I posted my video, naively pointing out what I thought to be common ground. But you wanted to do this childish tit for tat, and so this is what you get. So Matt, I'm sorry, but you're canceled. Wow, that is fun. Oof, it would have been better to see you two actually in a live stream discussing things, not arguing about stuff, but actually discussing topics and coming to some kind of understanding on each other's positions. It's unfortunate that that didn't happen. Before wrapping up, while I have everyone here, I do want to pivot and address some of the criticisms I got from the other side. First, with the gender is not a social construct bit, people have brought up things like gender being assigned to nouns in certain languages, and how our ability to interface with certain concepts is shaped and contextualized by language, psychosocial dynamics, the distinction between gender and gender identity, and other such nuance. That's all fine, and I'm sure there's plenty more I and we can all learn about gender. I was simply focusing on debunking the claim that trans people are just mentally ill, rather than that being trans is an identity with basis in biology. And that's fine, Dave. You can learn all you want about gender. The science can talk about gender. And when you say gender, you mean gender identity, which is what many of your papers, if not all of them that you've cited, talk about, which is what the laws that have been changed stipulate gender identity. What we are saying is gender identity is not something you can transition to. As for mentally ill, well, there's a spectrum on that, isn't there? There's those that actually do genuinely feel more masculine or more feminine, which is normal. And not only normal, but applies to every fucking one of us, regardless of what sexual preference we have, straight, gay, bi, or trans, or those that feel that they can transition into a cat. Now that's fucking mental illness. Then you got those that are genuinely trans and feel uncomfortable in their biological sex and genuinely want to transition to the other sex. Dysphoria, which is a completely different thing from making up a gender identity and then wanting to transition to it. Those 
a trans trenders. You know it. I know it. We all fucking know it. So no, being trans is not an identity, a gender identity. That's being a trans trender. Being trans is feeling uncomfortable in your own body, having dysphoria, and then wanting to transition from the biological sex you were born as to the only other biological sex you can transition to, even though you know, and we know, and they know, everyone knows, that we're not going to be able to become the opposite sex. And this is why gender identity pronouns are fucking useless and pointless in a transgender thing, because genuine trans people only need he she and also why this pronoun nonsense as well as the rest of the transgender movement that you seem to be supporting and the left is definitely supporting is making a mockery of genuine trans people and making it more difficult for them to live their lives much like the lgb extreme that's going on the lgb extreme pride events that are going on in front of children is making it more difficult for the average person who has already accepted the LGB to keep accepting the LGB because the average person will see this extreme LGB pride shit and think oh okay maybe we shouldn't have accepted that maybe we shouldn't have done this maybe we shouldn't have done that which is making it difficult for the genuine LGB people which is why most of the normal LGB people have abandoned the alphabet mafia this is the same shit that is happening with the trans people and this trans trender movement the sooner you see it the sooner we can all address it and the sooner we can or fix it and move on and hopefully unite and start saving people from suicide or being manipulated into doing something that they shouldn't be doing and will regret later on. You got that? I hope so. Second, with the sports thing, I am aware of HRT. I just think that a manipulation of hormone levels is not the only issue. Puberty is responsible for alterations in anatomy that are not reversed by any kind of therapy. The frame of the body itself is dramatically different between the sexes. I do not believe the science is settled here. Yes, it's true that height and weight and musculature vary within the sexes to provide advantages, but most sports don't take that into account because it would be impractical to divide everyone up endlessly by every category imaginable. It is not my intention to infringe on the dignity of any athlete or make sweeping conclusions about how the sports world should move forward. I also understand that if trans men were to compete with women, this would also be unfair due to having more testosterone. There are lots of problems, and I don't want to diminish the issue by simply saying that I don't care about sports. I hope this will be resolved in the near future in a way that is satisfactory for as many people as possible. I 100% agree with what you said here about the sports. I too don't give a fuck about sports. I don't watch sports. I don't care. But I also hope that this issue comes to some fair conclusion in the near future. And finally, with the comedy, I know that with Chappelle, it all started with the proclamation of being Team Turf, and I acknowledge that this is problematic language. I just maintain that people like Dave don't know about the difference between sex and gender, and accidentally defend the immutability of sex as though they are interchangeable. That's the main reason I made that video, to educate people about the difference. I genuinely do not find him or other comics to be hateful. If other people have reached a different conclusion, that is their business, and everyone is free to express their opinion by boycotting any comic. Okay, a few things here, Dave. Number one, fuck off with the problematic language. This is where all that bullshit with hate speech and fucking you're offended and I'm offended. Oh, we got to flag one. We got to flag you. We got to cancel you. This all stems with someone being offended due to some problematic language that they are offended by. Fuck off. If it upsets you, turn the channel. Don't watch the guy. Don't give your money to the guy. But don't police our fucking language unless we're going out to instigate legit violence against someone or incite violence, which we already have fucking laws for, we should be able to say whatever the fuck we want and we can deal with the consequences of what we've said. And I'm sure people like him don't care about the difference between sex and gender because for the longest time, we've all used those words interchangeably, which is why this whole video reply is about bringing back gender and sex together to mean biological sex and separating the transgender stuff, which belongs up with gender identity, which is not saying that gender identity isn't a thing, nor is it saying that the science doesn't back gender identity up, but anyone can can have a gender identity that doesn't make you trans and we can fix a lot of this bullshit by bringing gender and sex back to where it should be 
And so hopefully I've educated you from the standpoint of an average layman person looking at both sides of this bullshit. You can try to fix it and help fix it, or you can ignore it. That's up to you. But if I was to take a guess, most people would just clip what they want from me, ignoring the context or what I mean or what I'm trying to say, and then misrepresent me or just try to debunk certain things based on their understanding of what the science and the words and the definition of those words mean, instead of getting to the root of the problem, which if you haven't figured out by this point in this video, then there is something wrong upstairs. Anyway, at this point, the response has become longer than the original video, but that's what happens when you're dealing with ignorance, as I've learned from tackling so many varieties of it. Hey Dave, responses to videos usually are longer than the original videos. Just saying, and ignorance goes both ways. You can be the most educated person on the planet and still be fucking ignorant. And that's the end of my rant, which I felt compelled to write down and say out loud because I'm tired of hearing about the persistent controversy where in my mind there should be none whatsoever. The main takeaway is that the world needs to get over the fact that trans people exist. They've always existed. We are just now acknowledging their existence. We must accept and normalize trans people so that they feel safe to be who they are and express themselves as they choose. But along the way, let's not get swept up by the woke train. Let's make sure that all of our language is guided by science and logic rather than an accumulation of meaningless cultural currency. Remember, words like sex and gender have real meanings, so let's try to remember what those are and teach them to those who are having some trouble. And that's the end of my rant, which I didn't need to write down, but felt compelled to say out loud. Because I too am tired of hearing about the persistent controversy, when in my mind, there shouldn't be any. The main takeaway should be, already knows trans people exist. It's fucking hard not to know at this point. There is a difference between genuine trans people and those trans trenders. No one is saying that trans people can't express themselves however they fucking feel. What we're saying is you can't transition to a feeling. We're not saying your feelings don't matter, but your feelings are in your head and that's a gender identity, which we all can have. And if we all can have it, we can't all be trans. Ergo, genuine trans people are only transitioning from one biological sex to the other. And thus, we should reclaim the term gender and separate that from gender identity. <laughs> Let's not get caught up in the woke train, Dave. <laughs> How about fucking getting off that train then? Fuck me. You know what most people see as woke and, and get pissed off at? It's the extreme LGB doing their pride events in front of children. Most people don't give a fuck about the normal LGB that want to live their lives normally like everyone else. Even the normal LGB, as I've said in this video, are pissed off at the extreme LGB doing their pride events in front of children and whatnot. That being thrown in our faces everywhere. As well as this transgender nonsense with the 560 different gender identities each having a pronoun that we're meant to learn. Fuck off. All that comes under the umbrella of the woke train. That's how the general person sees it. And then if you add to that the left activists and the majority of the left co-signing all this fucking nonsense, just so they can virtue signal, you start to understand why the average person sees it as a gender ideology and wokeism and starts looking at the right for guidance. And you can bet your bottom dollar, the majority of people would rather fucking go with the right with their Jesus bullshit than have to put up with the left and their gender ideology and they're ignoring the fact that there is a gender ideology or claiming that there isn't, as well as a lot of the left supporting child mutilation and hand-waving it as gender-affirming care. Which one do you think the average person is going to fucking look more favorable on? That's why I say reclaim gender to mean sex, as it once was interchangeable, and separate this gender identity from it and call out the trans trenders and start backing and supporting the real transgender person instead of dismissing them 
as a far-right Nazi bigot. Can you imagine that, being a genuine transitioner? And because you, as a transitioner, deny the existence of 300 different gender identities being genders, you're being called a Nazi by the left that wants to virtue signal to support transitioners. It's fucking unbelievable. It would be a hilarious comedy skit if it wasn't true and happening today. So yeah, words do have real meanings. Let's bring those meanings back to those words that 99% of the population use interchangeably instead of appeasing the 1%, which ironically is mostly comprised of the trans-trender population, which the left has gotten behind. Let's take that power back from them, call them out for the imposters that they are, and start supporting real trans people and start using language as it was intended. But what do I know? I'm just a dumb Aussie cunt in Australia. Well, you've heard the views from Matt Walsh, you've heard the views from Professor Dave Explains, and I highly recommend subscribing to Professor Dave Explains. He's a really, really smart guy, very, very knowledgeable. And this video that I've made is not to hate on either one of those. It's just to give the average layman's point of view, the person watching both sides. And hopefully with that point of view, both sides can learn and find some common ground. So you've heard both of their views. You've heard my views. What are your views? Put them down in the comments. It's up to you, of course. Suit yourself.